When I saw that someone stole a billion dollars in NFTs by right-clicking all of them, I instantly wanted to steal them too. Lucky for me, the person who created it hosted the project on something called NFT Bay and he offered a torrent for anyone who wanted it. So my next idea was just to contact the creator, Jeffrey, and see if he'd be willing to help me find some way to get the files faster. But when I got on the call, our conversation took a totally different turn, and I want you to hear it. Wait a second, the NFT bay holds all the NFTs, but doesn't? No, it doesn't. Um, when I created the project originally, I said it was an art project. And I, along the way, I realized to demonstrate the message that needed to be conveyed to teach people about NFTs, the actual data did not matter. What is the message? I mean, you have a 17 terabyte file. Well, the message is, what are people actually purchasing with NFTs? Coffee? Like, what do you, what do people think that they're actually purchasing? I imagine they think they're buying a picture basically, right? The rights to a picture. Most of the time, most of the time, that's most what most people think of NFTs as. What I wanted to highlight in, in the project is a lot of people were saying that the, the image is valuable, the artwork is valuable because it's stored on the blockchain. It's not stored on the blockchain. It's just a hyperlink. Wait, wait, hold on a second. When I buy an NFT of a bored ape, or a lazy lion. I'm not actually purchasing that picture. What am I actually buying? You're essentially buying a, a piece of data and that data is has a link to where the image can be located. So like a URL, is that what you're saying? It's a URL. Go look at Etherscan and look at the contract and have a look at it. Literally people are buying a link like directions on a treasure map to a treasure. And they're, they're, they're saying that the treasure is the artwork. And the only reason people are buying stuff is for the treasure or the artwork. But what's actually being sold is the directions to the treasure. Wait a second. I know a lot of people, like why not just host the file on the blockchain? Why not just host the picture on the blockchain? Because the cost, the cost. In 2016, it was calculated it would cost $76,000 per gigabyte to store on the blockchain. Oh, it's got to have gotten worse, way worse. There's been blockchain size increases and the costs have got worse. It'd be nice to do that calculation again. But yeah, so back to your original question, what's in the torrent? Well, it contains chunks of blockchain data, the NFTs themselves. And it, the rest is, uh, if you're from a Unix background, F allocate. Now, when I launched the project, I said specifically that this would be uploaded to Internet Archive and it's now on the Internet Archive and it serves as just an example of, of, of the art project of spreading the message of what people are actually purchasing. And it compressed from 18 terabytes down to 12 gigabytes. I mean, you got the BBC, The Verge, Vice and many more to run articles about this NFT heist. I guess you heisted the NFTs, but everyone's thinking of you like right-clicking NFTs, but you didn't do that. No, it's actually quite dangerous to heist all the NFTs because if you think about it, what's actually happening is an NFT by definition is essentially an artwork is a linking to a file. Yeah. Right. There actually are some NFTs and to be clear, there's some NFTs where the quality of the NFT is so poor, it's like pixel art that they don't need to link it to elsewhere. Mm -hmm. They don't need a link as a hyperlink, but that is like the exception. Most are uh, actually hyperlinks to an image. Kotaku described it as the heist of the century, right? Because like all the NFTs have been downloaded. Mm -hmm. It's it always was a performance artwork just to write that there on popular culture of everyone, one side is saying these have value and the other side is saying they don't have value. And it was just this, this beautiful pop culture piece to like focus the narrative on educating people what they're actually buying. So in some ways, yes, it was a heist, but it wasn't the heist of the actual images. It was actually somewhat of a media heist. Yeah, and also kind of the heist of what the NFTs actually are, right? Because you you did actually download the blockchain in the, the, <laughs> the, the NFT bay. So in a way you actually have the, the what, actually those people own which is the hyperlinks but you don't have the files which they also don't have which is kind of yeah that i i it's i get what you're doing you're gonna <laughs> a lot of people off with this one but i i do have to ask okay 
Do you own the IFPS like address? Like, let's say I buy I buy a uh, pudgy penguin. Do I own that domain where the file's located? What do I own? You own a entry in a database that directs you how to access that image on IPFS. That's it. So theoretically, someone could go in and change the data at the IFPS or the drive link or wherever they're storing the data. It happens all the time. Uh, if you're following NFTs and the developments, it's called a rug pull. They sell the database entry on blockchain and blockchain is immutable and it cannot be updated, but they host the image elsewhere, say on Google Photos or Google Drive. And then once the art is art is sold, the, the database entry is sold, they just switch it to a picture of a rug. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So it's a play on the rug pool. That's good. That's really, uh, is that common? I think a lot of people would say, okay, this is very cute, but everyone just sort of accepts NFTs have value and there has to be a place for digital artists. This is where I'm at. I think it's good that we can, digital artists can make a living. I just think it's been hijacked by a bunch of scams. Do you think NFTs are worthless? I don't know. I do know that uh, a lot of people are being exploited and being left to help hold the bag. I think a lot of people are gonna take issue with the idea there's been no use found for it. I think a lot of people are gonna say, okay, yeah, it's a new technology. They're gonna liken it to the internet. Look, the internet, you couldn't have expected much early on. You would have missed what it's gonna become and how it's gonna change everything. They would say, look, same thing with crypto. Give us 10 years, we'll build that future. You kind of gotta just like trust us. It's factually correct that we've yet to find actual use for this technology yet doesn't mean that in the future we may for not like find money i mean like for right as now. like a, as like a currency i mean as like these these smart chain things they uh they're really interesting i think there's some cool uses of it i i think you could make the argument oh you can do everything that you can do on a smart chain in like a website or whatever but i guess the idea is that it's you can do, decentralize it you don't have to have anything running it you can replace a lot of fin stuff with like new fin text I don't know. I think you could find something. Yeah, but that's, I, I, I'm open. I, I went through the early internet and I see a lot of things that people are building. It reminds me of the early internet. So I'm open that there could be value in the future. Right. But I suppose what I'm getting at is, is now the right time for those type uh, for, for those people who are desperate and who could be exploited to be getting into crypto? Yeah, it's very interesting. I think a lot of people who missed the tech boom are trying to get in on the blockchain and get themselves rich without understanding what's sort of going on. And this is why I find this project actually so interesting is because you're sort of uncovering that like a lot of us do not understand NFTs too well. Like when you, when, here's another question. When, when I buy an NFT, do I own the copyright to that NFT? Some NFTs, yes. There, they, there are things like Board Ape Yacht Club. They specifically have gone out there and said that you do. Right. And this is why you're starting to see things like board at your club on shoes, etc. Right. They they are the the they are the exception. Do you agree with people like Gary Vee who think that in the future all contracts are going to sort of be signed on the blockchain or done on the blockchain or you know stuff like this? Like NFTs basically are going to be tokenized versions of ownership that could represent anything, a house, a uh, insurance contract. Anything. I've been thinking a lot about that, actually. I've been actually thinking of V2 of the NFT Bay. Uh, we've got something cooking, but that's not for now. Um, but specifically, I've been thinking about Gary V and what he's saying there. If you look at how people use their devices right now, like the younger generations, mm -hmm. they create alternative accounts. They create sock puppet accounts. They're not, they're not under their real names. Yeah. Right? So they're, the way they're using technology and their privacy model is very different. So if we go to that go to that idea that everything's conducted on the blockchain, if we're talking about what the blockchain is, it means anyone can read, anyone can read how much money you have, where you shop, where you where you visit, which plane, which which airline you use. Like if everything is on the blockchain as they talk about, that essentially means anyone can read anything about your lives. And if we look at where we are right now in society, we're seeing a lot of pushback over Facebook and how Facebook is run and how they're using that information in bad ways. Sure. And if, if we if we hit this blockchain nirvana where everything's on the blockchain, then we've created a world that is much worse than just Facebook. Instead of a singular company owning our data, no one 
essentially owns your data. Anyone can read your data and that's anyone. Right, because I guess right now we just have a bunch of wallet addresses. And so it seems like everyone's anonymous. We could fast forward this five years. Most of these wallet addresses are going to have names attached to them. You're going to see the Macy's. You know, if, if the utopia comes true, I guess, you're going to see the Target blockchain. You're going to see... So when you see your buddy's wallet, you're going to see everywhere they shop. Well, right now, uh, there's, there's, there's actually two real huge identifiers. You can buy an ENS domain or .eth. And that will actually assign a name to it to a wallet, and that will actually de-anonymize the wallet. Uh, I've seen videos of yourself, Coffee, where you've you've looked at uh, NFT scams where they've actually like like that's the name. It's no longer a wallet address. It's a name you can talk over the radio with. Right. And the other thing is, you can always see what currently you can see how much money is in a wallet, or how much money someone owns or has, and how much money was transacted. But with NFTs, it's not necessarily just about money. It can be a contract. And right now the contract is a link to an image. What happens in the world, like we talk about the, the benefits of immutability and data on the blockchain is immutable and that is a great thing. But is it really? Like if anyone can publish anything as a link and send it to your, to your wallet, is that a great thing for society? Yeah, I mean, you could send all sorts of crazy stuff anything and we we learned a lot of lessons in web one web two about spam did we not sure yeah well you already see that in wallets where uh like open like in open they've had to make it possible to hide certain parts because people were getting all these basically fake collections spammed into their wallets famous people's wallets so that other people would see that and see perceive value to that collection well, that's exactly it so what we've managed to create right now in the nft space is a world where you got to spend money to get rid of images that someone has sent you in the spam. Now, individual like OpenSea, they have the ability to hide said images and wallets, but that that data is always there on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. What happens if it, if that that what is sent to you is not? What happens if what was sent to you was not just like some art to try and pump their own collection? What happens if it was something worse, like illegal material, basically? Well, I'll give you an example. We we had things like the fappening, right? All the celebrities, they their nudes got hacked. Sure. What happens when some person publishes the fappening and essentially right now you can publish that information onto their social media profile and it's like them nude and it's immutable. It's always on the blockchain and you can never get rid of it. Quit talking to us about the negatives, Jeffrey. I want to hear about how to pump my bags. I'm just yeah, so that's an example. That, that, is, that is an example. So we've built these systems where essentially you have to pay money yeah, that's to weird. burn the NFT yeah. or the NFT, which could be abuse material. Yeah. But even if you burn it, it's always going to be attached to your name. Right. The record, the record wallet. of it will always be there. Yeah. Somebody, I guess somebody theoretically could send you a token with your address in the metadata, like your personal address. Yes, you could craft a token to dox. Oh my gosh. And it's permanently that's, against your name. That's terrible. And then everyone can see it. It is. Everyone can see it. We, we will see tokens for doxing. Uh, so we've built this open world of utopian nirvana and people are so focused on making money. Now I'm kind of I'm kind of getting into some, some ideas I have for future things to demonstrate points, but... Hopefully through this, we're also the sit down with we're educated people as well. That yeah, in the future, it's very possible we'll have tokens for doxing people and it's permanently attached to your wallet address. And so the idea is, okay, I'll just burn my wallet. I'll get a new wallet. Yeah. It's easy to get a new wallet. Yeah, right. And then some person, you see the stuff that happens on YouTube and the drama, mm -hmm. like some person just like, oh, they got a new wallet. All right, let's dox them again. And there's no mitigations, there's no spam filters, there's no nothing. Anyone can write anything on the blockchain and send it to your wallet. It's an inbox, a spam inbox that anyone can write to with no mitigations right now. I didn't know the the data limitations, just how steep they were on fees. That really changes what I think like maybe some of those innovations could be because if it's going to be on chain, if it's going to get the benefits of on chain, the it just costs so much money. Exactly. Um, that's actually the, the, the kind of the dirty secret of the Web3 movement is how much exists on standard internet infrastructure. Like they claim everything's on chain, right? but 
the way to know if something's on chain or not is really simple. When you click a button, did you get charged for clicking that button? That, it's, it, it's that simple. If any it's data that changes hands, you had to pay for it on Web3. Exactly, so that's how you know. If, if you're using a product, say OpenSea, and you click a link, uh, and you don't get charged for it, you're not, that means it's off chain. Yeah, I, I think I largely agree with you, you here, Jeffrey. And I think your NFT Bay is a really interesting project. Whether or not the pictures are there or not, <laughs> the NFTs are there. That's the crazy thing is I'm really having a hard time parsing from my brain that you own the NFTs, but not the pictures. I've just thought that the NFTs are the pictures and vice versa. And that's, that's one of the reasons that I've been laughing for a little bit. It's, it was two weeks ago since the launch that one half is saying, thank you for backing up all the NFTs. We, we fully wear that the artwork ha is not backed up on chain. Thank you for backing it all up. And at the same time, they're also saying that the artwork has no value. It's the contract, the NFT, the contract mm. that has value. Meanwhile, the other side is, the uh, other side is saying, oh, we're just gonna right click save the treasure, the NFT. And they're saying that the, the, it doesn't have value. So essentially the NFT bay, it's upside down. It contains the actual NFTs, not the JPEGs. It does It does make me wonder what happens when all this Web 2 infrastructure breaks down. Let's say you have a Google Drive link that has your image, right? And somebody forgets to keep paying Google for you know their extra storage space or whatever. Your file gets deleted. Now what is your NFT worth? It's happened. It happens all the time. People have dropped millions on these contracts that link to an image host and that image host goes offline. <laughs> Like if it links to an internet domain name and that domain name doesn't get registered anymore, that means anyone in the world can go register that domain name and they can put any image in that person's art gallery. Oh boy. Oh boy, that's oh, gonna yeah. go bad. I know that's gonna happen. And when it yes, does, it is. that is gonna be funny. So is it true that somebody screenshotted the NFT Bay website and sold it? <laughs> yeah, it, it's true. It's actually hilarious. Uh, VVD, uh, Vincent Van Do, took a screenshot of the NFT Bay and then sold the hyperlink to the screenshot of the NFT Bay, <laughs> made $18,000 for selling the, the the treasure map to the treasure with the image. Um, and then I took a screenshot of his auction result and I turned that into an NFT and called it the collector becomes the collected. And that is likely the only NFT that I'll ever create in, in its current incarnation and form. And well, if you're going to be talking about the, these things, you you have to be authentic. You got your action. How can you talk about it if you, unless you have done it? So I created an NFT of the NFT of the NFT bay that can hold all the NFTs. Very interesting. You're a, you're a very interesting man, Jeffrey. I will link the website. Um, I hope you guys learned something. That was the whole intention. It, when me and Jeffrey got together, we said, look, we want this to be educational. I hope you guys learned something. Thanks for watching. And yeah, find out what you really own. Thanks. See ya.